Hey guys, welcome to my new video tutorial. In this, to this, in today's video tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about kind of my favorite. Well, I'm talk about JSON P object. Well, JSON P, how to use JSON P to grab the different kind of services provided by you know other other companies like. Yahoo, most of the company they basically provide JSONB services, NBA or whatever. Not only that, but I'll show you how to consume it. Along with that, how to basically provide JSONB services from your domain. That's what I would like to talk about today. So most of us are familiar with the JSON object because it is very lightweight and it is more, it's it's a uh, right now it's more popular than XML to transmit the data from client to server because it's a lightweight you know compared to XML because you don't have to pass all those closing tag, ending tag and then parsing of XML. Other thing JSON is popular these days because JSON is basically um, a native object to, to JavaScript. You can easily parse it. So in a lot of projects we use JSON very frequently. But uh, the JSON P on the other hand is basically stands for Java's script object notation with padding, right? So it is so basically, let's say, you need to make a ASAX communication from one domain to another domain because of the security, security restriction on the browser, you cannot do it. Unless there is a rule called same origin policy. Basically, if it is from the same server, same port number, and say you can make a ASAX communication, but you cannot make cross-domain communication. But what JSONP allows us to do, kind of like do a hacking on it, it's basically a hack, of course. So, JSONP, some JSONP, we do, using JSONP, we can grab some services from the, let's say, we can, whatever service the third party provides. Okay? So, that's what I'm going to show you with example. Well, I have already written the code, but I will go ahead and explain to you how it is implemented. In this example, I have used the following programming languages or technology or whatever. I'm using MySQL database and PHP because this is, um, and I will tell you the reason why I'm using this. And then my client in this case will be Visual Studio, basically using JavaScript, HTML. And then for the data binding purposes, this library called Knockout.js is really, really nice. So that's, I have used it very slightly. Okay, that is just a basic introduction on what I'm going to do today. Let's go ahead and explain to you in detail. First thing is MySQL. I have MySQL 5.5 in my machine. So when you install MySQL 5.5, by default there is a there is a database called the world. Let's say um, called the world. And in that database, there is a table called city. Select everything from city. This is a huge amount of city, almost like 4,000 or so amount of city for the different countries and stuff. So that is my data. That is the data I'm going to provide for using uh, PSP and MySQL. I'm, you, I'm exposing that service to, to the client. Okay, let's look at into how to do something like first. Let's look at into the PSP side of the code. Um, to write the PHP code, I have basic, I use uh, the the NetBeans IDE. So basically, I have the index page here. Uh, in, in this is very simple PHP code here. Okay, so basically, I include world record provider. I have a class called world Re record provider. I'll show that one later. So this one is I set the header, the content type of the header of this index page as application JavaScript because that's what it's going to return to, to, to the client, okay? And in the query string, the callback will be provided by the client and I grab whatever value of the, that callback going to be, okay? And I create the instance of object called world record provider. Let's go ahead and read into that one. So, it's very simple. Um, here is the world record provider class. And I have, of course, I'm using the PDL to, to connect to the database from PSP to, to MySQL database. And here is my uh, class called world record provider and it has a private CD, which is basically an array. In the constructor, I save that CD as an array, okay? 
and then I have a function called get all world cities the method in that class um, basically I created this DB new PDO manager offset because it will provide me the connection to the database once that connection is established I'm basically saying select everything from city ordered by the country code basically running this query here and on each iteration I'm basically I have an array here I'm returning I'm setting the array city of city array like this so basically from the database I'm selecting name the name here and the country code and the district and the population and putting that data into an array and assigning to this uh, cities array object once that is all done basically all those data is basically put into that cities okay and just to return the cities to the color and of course the curl the the, the color in this case would be case would be the index.php class basically create an instance of that object and I call it's a record get all world cities and I'm basically I need to encode that the that, that the array as a JSON data and the PSP provides this JSON encode method and some flag here this flag so that the when it shows in the screen looks looks pretty you can see it basically kind of provides some tabs some you know so some white space and stuff like that and then whatever the callback is I just echo that information and provide the to the callback I provide the world city that's it so that is the PSP side of the application and of course you know in this case I um, the PSP is also running from IS IS8 because you, know, you can do some configuration in IS8 to uh, to run the PSP file you don't need any other server like you know the PSP server to download IS can automatically do it for you so uh, that is well actually uh, let me show you what you have to do is basically is my my C drive is I need pub and w dot the root and like I said you know uh, here's my PSP related files and this is the PSP project as you can see here is the index page that's what it's reading that data from okay just for your references how to do it all right once that is all done now let's switch the gear and go back into the job uh, to the visual studio side first thing first like I told you before, you know, I'm not using any um, jQuery, any only only third-party library. I'm using in this example is just the JSONP without jQuery. I'm just sorry, I'm just using the jQuery J library called Knockout JS, as you can see here in the reference in line number six. Now, you know, whenever I write JavaScript and HTML and CSS, I don't like to have all this clutter together in one file. I would like to have all them in separate file, you know, all the all JavaScript in, in JavaScript file or CSS in there, and then, you know, uh, HTML just to mark up in the page, if it is possible. Sometimes when you write in logic, it's not possible, but you can, you know, kind of do extra work to make it possible. Okay, anyway, whatever your preference is. Um, okay. So here is my markup. Basically, I have everything is inside a symbol, single a uh, deep container here, and I have a table, and it is a table heading. Basically, the heading contains name, country code, district, and population. And then, like you know, I am using Knockout JS to do data binding. For the data binding purposes, I'm using this for each uh, construct of the Knockout JS. So I'm basically saying, hey, do a data bind using this construct and all the data will be coming out from current city's object and that object current city on each city contain information property basically observable property the knockout js call it has a property like name and country code and district and population all those things and so once that is all done go ahead and bind it okay if before i go into a detail of course you know the client how the client would be able to consume like I, I, in this example, I showed you how to provide a JSONP service, but I haven't showed you yet how to consume it, right? Without using in jQuery, just from plain JavaScript. That would be my second part. Before I can do that, let me, I would like to show you what this application does. Okay, let's run it. Let's 
So basically it is running right now because it has to pull out all those 40.